Frank Caliendo on line one. Uh, Frank, good morning. You are on Talk of the Town with Dave, Jay, Sam, and our guest right now, Steve McMurray, GM of our local TV station, WKTV. Good morning, Frank. Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was Frank, Samantha. Is that is that Frank on line one? Yeah, it's always, uh, I try to make it as awkward as possible. <laughs> well, you just did. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate you uh, joining us. And by the way, uh, early in the morning for you out there near the West Coast, right? Yeah, it's, uh, what, 6 a.m. here? <laughs> What a treat for me. What a treat for you. <laughs> oh, wait. I was talking earlier with the mayor of Utica about his uh, basketball career. I know you at one time, I think were telling me years ago, you were quite a baseball player on the AAU level, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, that's what I tell people. Um, <laughs> no, I was on a team. Uh, we, we, when AAU was just starting the Junior Olympics for baseball, we, were, we won the national championships in 1988 out in Urbandale, Iowa. Wow. So, yeah, we took a team that was... It was like a movie of just, uh, you know, weirdos and goofballs. And uh, we took it and we ended up, who do we end up beating in? Uh, I think we ended up beating an Iowa team, actually. We had to beat Florida and California on the way to doing it. And not even just teams, the entire states we beat. Um, so. <laughs> Were you a good hitter, fielder, both? What was your specialty when you played? Uh, hitting was probably what I could do. I, 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 I didn't have a great arm and... Uh, I, I could run okay for you know uh, like a fourteen year old, but uh, but really I could just hit the ball, short compact swing, and hit it, spray it all over. Talking to Frank Caliendo on the phones. If you want to join us, you can give us a call, an email, or a text at the Talk of the Town one hundred point seven FM WUTQ. Frank, how do you turn in, uh, a baseball career into a comedy career? Well, if you'd have seen me play, that would have <laughs> been pretty simple explanation. Uh, I was a catcher in the in the lower levels. When we went to AAU, I played outfield, but I was a catcher, and I was always messing with the batters and and stuff like that. But I I, I don't know. I grew up watching a lot of television, and just uh, I, I was a kid who would just sit in my room and play with Legos and watch TV, and that's basically what I did. And I don't know where the mimicry came from. I think I just had a knack for it. But we then would do impressions of teachers and coaches and all that type of thing, and. Uh, eventually went to school at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee in a broadcast uh, journalism uh, route, and then uh, what I did was uh, I wasn't really good at being an interviewer. I, I just, especially when I was in uh, college, I always felt weird like going up to try and interview somebody for a college project. I think I could have done it better if I was working for a news entity or something like that. Although it really wasn't my forte, but. Uh, I, you know, to do those projects, I always, always, always like dreaded them. Like, yeah, hi, I'm, my name is Frank. I'm from the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee broadcast journalism <laughs> class, and I would love to. You're gone. Okay. So. <laughs> and uh, I think you've, you've told me that you've gotten into trouble with some of your impressions with some of the subjects of those impressions, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's like where people didn't really know what to think. Like John Madden was the one who didn't like me, and people were like, how do you know? I'm like, listen, I've been sat in offices by network presidents and uh, all kinds of people that said he didn't like me. I think I turned it around at the Super Bowl a few years ago in Dallas. It was at the Four Seasons Hotel. It's not really important to the story. I just want you to know the type of place that I'll stay at. <laughs> <laughs> and when, and when somebody else is paying. Yeah, let me finish. Uh, and uh, so I, I, Jimmy Johnson, football coach, not the race car driver, standing next to John Madden. I walk up like, Jimmy, can you believe I'm this close to John Madden? I'm like, what? You have met him? Taps man on the shoulder, he turns like, what is it, Jimmy? Oh. And the, the look on his face was like, and Shaggy and Scooby would see the bad guy pop out of the barrel. So um, I made his grandkids laugh, and that, that turned it around quite a bit. That, that made him really good. When I met John Gruden, that was a lot of fun, because I just started doing the Gruden impression at ESPN, and everybody, all the executives are standing around. They want to see how this goes, because they don't want him mad, and they want me to keep doing it, because they like it. And I walk up to him, he's like, so you're the guy who does me, huh? Where are you from, man? And I knew where he was from, so I said that. I'm like, Sandusky, Ohio. He's like, really? I'm like, no. He's like, good, because you were blowing my mind, man. <laughs> and I know Jim Rome really dislikes you, and I love your Jim Rome impression, but I think that's because he doesn't have a sense of humor about himself. Definitely not. When you're one of the clones, you get that I am all-knowing, not unlike the all and powerful Oz. How great is that? Do not bring back the curtain. That's ridiculous. 
<laughs> Frank Caliendo joining us on the hotline here on WUTQ FM at 100.7 FM. Frank, obviously, uh, you know, a great impressionist, a uh, great comedian. What is your favorite impression, if you may, if I may ask, for you to? Um, to... You know, whenever they're newer, that's uh, that's something that I like. Uh, when when I surprise people with something different, uh, but they all become, I don't know. Uh, Kind of. I don't. I don't want to make it sound like I'm some weirdo. They all become like friends. Or something. <laughs> You're <laughs> just like having conversations where with... my puppets are my buddies, and I get them seats on the airplane. Um, <laughs> it's it's one of those. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I I'm like the, the 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 ones that get the reactions. Uh, am I tired of doing like the John Madden? I guess a little bit. But when the reaction the reaction from the audience is big, you know, people want to see that kind of a thing. So to me. That's cool. I, I I I think some of the impressions, and I don't want to put myself on some super high level or anything, but it, it just works in the same way. It, it, when you listen to music, you remember those songs from a time in your life. Mm -hmm. So the uh, same way for people who are fans of me and the the the, the impressions I've I've done and stuff like that. I think it, and it works with like TV shows too, or radio, whatever. Whatever you're doing at a certain point in your life, you identify that um, with that part of your life. So, I think for me, the different impressions, you know, and people like impressions that I do for those reasons. Different people like different ones, whether it's um, John Madden or Gruden or Morgan Freeman or or any of those. Um, you know, one that was that used to be really big was Robin Williams, and I, I don't really do. I haven't done that on stage really since he passed away, and because he went in such a, a tragic way, mm -hmm. taking his own life. But people yell it out all the time. They're like, "Do Robin Williams?" I'm like, eh, "I might do a well, okay, you know, that kind of a thing, and then move on." <laughs> Subdued Robin Williams. <laughs> yeah, the serious one. Um, if but it's one. it's one of those things where I, you know, I just feel weird about it. Um, I I. I I have a for in terms of entertainment. I've I've got this weird thing that most people I I, I, I run into don't seem to have, especially comedians. This uh, this uh, a group of ethics or morals. I guess. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things. I just if it feels gross to me, I try not to. I saw a guy or I've seen a couple people when Robin Williams died. There were people putting their impressions of Robin Williams on the internet. It was like they were doing auditions, and I just was like, ah. Mm. What, so you're trying to be seen using the guy's death to be seen. I guess that's the way it works. But to me, I was just like, in the words of Charles Barkley, this was just plain terrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. You, you, we talked about Robin Williams having sort of a, a different level of voice that he went to, and maybe a subdued voice. I love Al Pacino for that reason, and you, you've captured both the sort of the angry, animated Pacino and the more subdued Al Pacino as well, which I love. The one, the one where I'm just explaining something to you, just the way it goes. And then, of course, there's the one where I'm going to tell you <laughs> how you got to feel. <laughs> and Frank, you've, uh, you've, you've developed some fantastic political uh, guests as well. Are you working on any new ones as we uh, gear up for this presidential uh, race? Trump, I for instance? I would see if they win unless they're, uh, you know, if, if I'd have done a Mitt Romney, nobody would care right. at this point. And there's some people who had great Mitt Romneys and good for them, but to me, I'm looking for something that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on now and then not use. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's John Lovitz with Michael Dukakis alive back in the 80s. Yeah. Well, that one was a waste. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Trump is, Trump is going to, it, it looks like he's going to be a lot of fun uh, or a big pain to a lot of people for, for quite some time. I, I find him, uh, I find him, uh, I don't know if the word is hilarious, but <laughs> it's uh, luxurious, uh, which is the Trump word for anything that's great. It is luxurious, amazing. Listen, I'm going to win this thing. I don't even know why we have any more debates. We don't even need anybody. I've decided I'm going to start wearing a hat that says, I'm the president. <laughs> <laughs> when did he start wearing hats, too? That's the funny thing to me. We're going to make America great again, and the way we're going to do that is by blocking out my comb over. <laughs> <laughs> they are great hats and a great slogan he's got. And as far as political impressions, my favorite is still George W. Well, it was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, it, uh, you know, my brother, uh, Jeb, which isn't even his name, uh, 
It's J E B, which stands for uh, Jeb. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. There it is. Yeah, President Obama's the cadence with him. It's, he talks uh, slow at uh, the beginning and speeds up at the end. So he's too <laughs> Frank Caliendo joining us on the phone here at uh, 100.7 FM WUTQ on the talk of the town. Now, Frank, thanks for joining us, first of all. This is my very first day on the airwaves on my new station here after having been part of another show, as you know, for 20 years in Syracuse and then at other stations before that. You and I were talking about how talk radio has changed and how the whole radio landscape has changed. I really appreciate you joining me on my first day here. Absolutely. Good to good to uh, glad uh, glad it's working out for you. Glad to uh, glad to be a part of it. Yeah. Would you do an ID for us? And if you want to do as any different voices you want in the middle of the ID, feel free. I know you've done that for me before. Would, could you do one? And just get, yeah. Just what, get what the, just, don't. My name is inconsequential. Just get the talk of the town in there somewhere. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, former president of the United States of A, George W. Bush, and you're listening to the talk of town. On the station that I can't remember the call letters. That's a terrible idea. Don't laugh over it. This is Frank Calabino pretending to be somebody else, maybe Charles Barkley at the moment, and you're listening to the talk of the town. These guys are a bunch of knuckleheads. I mean, I mean, I mean you, you know, I mean, it was one of those ideas you didn't think was going to happen, then boom. I mean, there you go.